Uh, thank you so much, everybody, for uh, giving me the opportunity to come and talk to, uh, to, talk to you all. Um, I've got a very interesting story about um, uh, cybersecurity um, and, and actually talking a little bit about uh, criminal organisations and how we are at all, uh, in, in effect, responsible for protecting ourselves against a lot of the organised crime actually um, uh, leading from Russia, um, so we'll, uh, maybe there's a lead in there, so not only are they going to change the world, they may change the world in many different ways. But um, I'm going to start off with a small timeline of, uh, of organised crime gangs. Um, you, you probably know who this guy is, uh, it's Ned Kelly, he was around back in the, uh, the late 1800s, and one of his early um, conquests was, uh, was ripping off a bank uh, and a stagecoach and a couple of other um, uh, stores and so forth around that part of the world, made off with uh, 10,000 pounds at the time. If we move the, the clock forward 20 or so years, we'll look to these guys here, Butch Cassidy and the Sundance Kid. This isn't really Butch and Sundance, these, these are the, uh, the guys that took part in the movie that, um, that made them famous, but they made off with $16,500, so a little bit more than what, um, uh, what Ned Kelly had started with. Seven years later, uh, we look to the Great Train Robbery, um, in 1963, uh, that brought in about a million pounds. So you can see that the money is, uh, is obviously increasing over time with these organised organized, uh, uh, gang activities. Turn the clock forward to um, earlier this year. And things have changed a little bit. So with Ned, Butch, the grain train robbery, um, were all individual gangs that went out there and um, extorted money out of predominantly banks, financial institutions. And so did these guys. And these actually were um, a Russian gang um, focused uh, on extorting money out of 300 different banks from around the United States, Japan, and the European community. So one location and expanding out around the world to um, you know, extort $1.295 billion. A lot of money. Right? So how do we combat that? Right? And, and, and this is the, the point that I want to get through to, to a lot of you, and certainly a lot of the parents in the room as well, that it is up to us, we can help combat um, a, lot of this, uh, a lot of this activity by the way that we act and behave online. So there's a couple of banks here that I'll just throw up. You may or may not have heard of them. And for the first one, 20,000 emails were stolen from the European Central Bank. Bank of America had about 14 gigabytes stolen uh, of some of the intellectual property, uh, user data, customer information, financial records, etc. JP Morgan Chase, 83 million user accounts were stolen late last year. Right? And so if you're a JP Morgan Chase customer, for the adults in the room, um, quite often um, you will find that your details have been compromised and you've probably received a letter from, from these folks. And you probably don't want to really hear about the, um, the banks or the financial institutions, right? And what's it got to do with organised crime and what's it got to do with cyber security? Right? We're all familiar with Twitter. Right? What about these guys? And if we go through a list of very well-known brands, you'll start to see that it's not just financial institutions that are going out after your money. These guys are going out after other pieces of information, your personal information, so they start to um, act on your behalf, open up bank accounts on your behalf. Right? So let's have a look. You probably remember Apple. There was a lot of celebrity phones uh, photos exposed where uh, uh, account details uh, were made available. Um, Snapchat, 100,000 photos released. Twitter, quarter of a million different accounts were compromised. 145 million from eBay. And then we get to look to the corporates, and you're probably all very familiar with the Sony breach. Right? So it was in the papers. Everybody that I talked to, and I'm in the security industry, so I get this, this question a lot. Executive salaries were exposed. Unreleased movies were made available. Um, uh, terrorist threats, actors' phone details, address details, all of this sort of information were now exposed because there was an attack made on there. You all remember the film, The Interview, right? And, the, and that the ties back into, into North Korea there. And then there was the target breach. 110 million credit cards, um, $200 million worth of damage, um, and some very senior executives of this organisation lost their jobs. Right? So how do they do this? And this is where we all come into play. They simply ask for it, right? They simply ask for it. Now, let's have a little bit of Q&A time. You guys have been sitting here very patiently um, all day and ask a couple of questions. So if I was to come out and ask you in the street as a perfect stranger for your credit card or your credit card number, would you give it to me? 
not a chance, right? What about your passport? We're traveling, we're in the airport, walk up, say, excuse me, can I borrow your passport, please? Passport number? Right. Home address, would you give that out to anybody? All right, and so, date of birth? <laughs> yes. All right, so we'll go through the list, student IDs, email addresses. What about your social media password? <laughs> go, and, go, go and Google what people do for a piece of chocolate in terms of giving up um, some of their personal information or specifically their user ID passwords that they use on Facebook and Twitter and Snapchat and so forth. All right, and would you give up your birthplace? Probably not. So all of these pieces of information are, are called, or what we call in the industry, PII. Right? Personally identifiable information. And this is what identifies ourselves when we um, enact online. So when you open up a bank account or when you open up a, uh, uh, an online social media account, you've got to provide a lot of these pieces of information. Right? Now, you all just said no to all of those questions. Right? PJC, does anybody know what these three letters mean? <laughs> Mr. Crawley, there he is, front and center. I had lunch with Mr. Crawley today, it was a very fantastic trip that I had over there. What about PTC? No? Is it the same guy? Some of you guys are twigging now, right? Is this the same guy? Right, so if you get an email from this chap, you know it's uh, Mr. Crawley from St. Hilda's School. Yeah? How about this guy? Who's he? Is this the same guy standing here in, in front of you? What about a week ago? Did you guys receive an email saying the IT network was down? You didn't? How many didn't respond? <laughs> liars. You're all liars. <laughs> so, the, so the point being is that you were just so adamant that you would not give me any of this information whatsoever, right? Two slides ago, never would you give this out. And then all of a sudden, some character called Peter Crawley Southport at gmail.com sends you an email and you offload your birth date and all of your user information. Um, but I will tell you that most of you were very polite, wishing Mr. Crawley a happy weekend and, uh, and uh, you know, enjoy your time. So thanks so much for, uh, for your politeness, but not so good in the way that you uh, handled your personally identifiable information. 33% of you responded, so everyone who stuck their hand up before might have been telling a little bit of a fib. So the point being, right, is that we've got to be really careful in what we do and how we behave uh, in, in the way that we operate online. Now, that particular phishing attack was done via an email, and a fairly, you know, cleverly crafted email, by the way, right? Same thing happens on your mobile devices. Now, let me just touch on the mobile world. How many people live on the planet, do you think? Rough guess. Wow, you guys are good. Right? How many people own a toothbrush? I hope all of you guys own a toothbrush. Right, what about a flushing toilet? All right. Anybody want to guess this one? How many has a mobile device? There are more mobile devices on this planet than there are people, right? So if we're going to lead back to those criminal organizations that are trying to extort money out of us, right, there's a huge target for us. So we're going to be really careful on the types of applications that we use and that we download. 108 billion downloads are expected by the end of 2017, right? Of them, 11.6 million will be deemed malware or malicious software, right? Think of it as a virus back in the olden days, right? A couple of years ago. So malware on your device is very hard to detect because there's not a lot of uh, malware protection services for your, for your phones. And in fact, 90% of all applications that are stored up on the Apple Store, stored on Google Play, have been hacked. 
Right? So you potentially, you could be going and downloading hacked applications, right? unbeknownst to you. Answer this question. Would you let iPhoto gain access to your photos? Yes. Probably. What about Google Earth in your contacts? Probably not. Why would, why would Google Earth want to have access to your contacts? But it's contacts. What about flashlight? Back in the days when you used to have to download a flashlight app, this one's asking you, can I have access to your current location? No. Right? So, so no. Okay, what about this app? No. Definitely not, right? What, 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 it, you know, what is this to start with? All right, so a couple of examples. I don't know if many of you use QR codes, right? But they are also very tricky and something to watch out for. Which one is evil, right? <laughs> There's no way of knowing, right? Absolutely no way from the human mind <laughs> to know which one is bad. All right, so you guys, are, you, know, you know this game, all right? And when you get stuck, what, what do you do? Do you keep on battling against that or do you go online and find some cheats? You pull them all down, right? And so just recently, from, uh, from an Android point of view, 33 fake Minecraft cheat apps actually up on their Google Play site. So on their official site, 33 of the Minecraft cheat apps um, were, uh, were you know, located up there. Affected 600,000 Android users. And for those who did download these cheat apps, sucked $7 out of your account that you had associated with your Minecraft account every single week. So either you or your parents will see a $350 bill at the end of the year based on your downloading of one of these um, crack apps, right? or, or, or the mod apps times 350 by 600,000, you've got a large number, right? So the bad guys don't necessarily have to go out after banks in order to make a handy profit. So to, to conclude, I'd, I'd like to just say, you know, how do we um, you know, combat this? And it was fantastic to see some of the earlier speakers talking about um, uh, technology in general, and specifically women in technology and girls in technology. So, um, you know, I hoped that many of you would see this, be inspired by this, and, and start to look potentially at a, uh, at a career in the IT industry. I tell you, there's not a large percentage of females in the IT industry, there's even less in the IT security industry. We have security experts, my company that I work for, uh, we've got a lot of security experts that help protect big companies against this. Um, but most importantly, the awareness of what's going on, what you're doing, what you're clicking on, is what's most important. So if nothing else that you get out of what I've just said then today, go home, remind your families, Remind your friends to, uh, to act safe when you're online and just think before you click. Thank you so much. <laughs>